All right, let's go ahead and get started with this one. So this is number 14. The uh, table shows the cost per year of attending four different types of colleges. A student's planning to attend college in five years. The student has saved $1,200, plans to save another 50 for the next six months. So let's see how much that is by doing the 60 times 50. You can use your calculator. So he's going to be able to save another 3,000. The student already has 1,200. So that's going to give the student $4,200. So based on this information about the student's plan, which statement about the possible choices for college is true? F, the student will be able to afford the cost for one year at a private four-year college. No, that's too high, so that's not working. The student will be able to afford out-of-state costs for a half a year at a public college. So it says out-of-state, uh, this is per year, so the, I don't know what these numbers are, they transferred over, so 28,000 divided by 2, because that's for one for the year, so a half a year divide that by 2, that cost would be 14,000. So that's, he does, the student does not have enough. The student would be able to afford in-state costs for a half a year at a public four-year college. So I don't, let me put that down here. 11,000 divided by two. So it's gonna be 5,500. Student does not have enough. The student will be able to afford in-state costs for one year at a public school. Yes, that is true. All right, next one. So says, fulgurites are pieces of glass in the shape of a cylinder produced when lightning strikes sand. A student found a fulgurite with a height of 21 inches and a diameter of 6 inches. Which equation can be used to find V, the volume of the fulgurite, in cubic inches? All right, so notice that it all it is is plugging in the numbers. So we have our formula. Now remember, with a cylinder, the base is a circle. So that area of the base there, the big B, is pi r squared. Because find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. So we're leaving the pi symbol. It says it has a diameter of 6. That's all the way across. We need the radius. So divide that by 2, it's 3. So you're going to square that number. And then the height is 21. So we look for, it's not A, because this is a 6, here's a 3, here's a 21, B looks good. These are not squared. Right, next one. A line graphed on the coordinate grid can be used to determine the number of inches of water added to a swimming pool after different hours. So 0 hours, 0, and then 1 hour, it's right below the three mark, and you can see it just goes up over the number of hours. Which statement describes the slope of the graph line? So you need to find two points that are on the line. So you might need to zoom in so where it crosses. It looks like right here and then right here. So you can see what they have. So it's a decimal. Then we we rise up. Remember, you can just do rise over run, or you can do do the change in y over the change in x. However you want to do it, using that formula that's on the the star reference chart. If we just count, you go one, two, three, four. And then it goes over one, two, three, four, five. All right, so it is in a decimal form. So now do four divided by five, and it's 0.8. So this would be the correct answer here. 17, the coordinates of the vertices of rectangle are given. We have to go through all those, but here's our rectangle, A, B, C, D. Which measurement is closest to the distance between point B and D in units? So let's look at that. They're looking, their question is between B and D. 
So that's the diagonal. It forms that right triangle. It doesn't matter which one you use. You want to go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem because we now have the right triangle. So on the distance here, count the spaces 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then going down, it's 1, 2, 3. It's hard to see here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm going to verify that because that was hard to see. So it goes from this one point is 5, 3, and down here it's 5, negative 9. Yeah, so it's to go from 3 to negative 9, that's 12 units, so that is correct. So we're going to square the 6, square the 12, you get 36 plus 12 squared is 144, Add those together, your calculator if you need to, and then do the square root of that number. Okay, so 180, and that's C squared, so then you're going to do the square root of that to get C. Definitely put that into your calculator. Remember, it's the second X squared. And then 180 is 13.4, so and it does continue on, but you can see that B is going to be the answer. Next question, so which situation describes a non-proportional relationship? Just a real quick reminder, so when you have a proportional relationship, it goes through that origin. And non-proportional ones do not go through the origin. So you have this point here that's called your y-intercept. So this one is 0. So for the green line, it would just be y is equal to mx, or that's proportional relationship. So we always say constant, the constant change, kx. This one has a y-intercept, so it's mx plus b. So we're looking for non-proportional, so you've got to think, is there something being added or subtracted? So let's look at it. Uh, the first one, circumference of a circle with radius x units can be represented by y equals 2 pi x. There's no plus or minus, so that can't be it. Look at this one, same thing. There's not a plus or minus anything, so that's going to go through that origin. But look here, plus. So it is H. This one does not have the plus or minus, so that's proportional. Again, the proportional goes through the origin, so you're not going to have plus or minus anything. All right, number 19, pentagon PQRST was graphed on a coordinate plane. It's rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin to form the new pentagon. Okay, it's not changing in size, it's just they're just rotating the pentagon, so turning it without changing the size. Keep that in mind, let's look at the statements. The area of the pentagon, the new one, is not equal to the original. That's not true because it's the same size. The size does not change. The new one is not congruent. That's not true either. The perimeter of pentagon, the new pentagon, is greater. Well, that can't be it because it doesn't change in size. The angle measures of pentagon, of the new one, are congruent to the corresponding, yes. It is the same size and shape, so the angles and lengths of the sides do not change. All right, number 20. Let me move this down a little bit. All right, so the scatter plot shows the relationship between the number of nights spent in a hotel and the cost of the hotel. And you can see the points plotted. Which conclusion best supports supported by the scatter plot? 
as the number of nights spent in the hotel increases, the total cost of the hotel increases. I would say that is a true statement. What's wrong with the next one? As the number of nights spent in a hotel increases, the total cost decreases. No. As the number of nights spent in the hotel increases, the to total cost remains the same. No. And there's no relationship. That's not true either. It's F. All right, we're going to do one more on this recording. So we have set Q and Z are subsets of the real number system. Which Venn diagram best represents the relationship between the two sets? Now, real numbers, remember, they're not irrational. So I'm sorry, real numbers are, are the set of rational and irrational numbers. Okay, this says because all rational numbers are integers. Okay, that could be true because this could be the integers and then this could be rationals. Okay, this says sum. That's not true because all, all the, oh, well, this is backwards. I'm sorry. I read that wrong. All integers are rational numbers. So be careful. All right, let's look at C, because all integers are rational numbers. There it is. All right, let me know if you have any questions with this recording.